it's really difficult to f ever feel truly confident when you're trying to project something to the outside world that isn't true. That's one of the things where I think ego really gets in the way is we want people to perceive us a certain way and it's not who we really are. No fake shit against me shall prosper. Yes, I came, I saw, I conquered. No fake shit against me shall prosper. Today I want to really concentrate on ego. I mean, we always talk about it, letting it whether it be a fuel for you or kind of be a, an uh, uh, obstruction, as it were. And just doing my research like I do before every topic, mm -hmm. you can't, re there's no real like, there are bad things about it, but there are so many good things about having an ego too. So I just wanted to start off with the plain definition of it. And it was, ego is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Well, that's, that's the thing. Uh, so a lot of times there's confusion so ego, my definition of ego, what I focus on is that is your definition of, of self, your sense of self. And we construct that. And it's constructed through all sorts of things in our past, our belief systems, our parents' belief systems that they pass on to us, our experiences in life, our insecurities, our fears, all those things feed into this construct of our sense of self. Then there's the other part of ego. When people think of ego, they think of arrogance. Right. They think, oh, you know, that, guy, that guy's got a huge ego. You know, what's interesting, a lot of times that's a lot of bravado. That's just air cover for insecurities. Defense mechanisms. Right. So oh. there's, there's really two separate things here. They're, they're related, but two different definitions. I can tell you from my perspective that, uh, you know, again, ego is that sense of self. And I, there's no separating yourself from your ego. There's like n not there's no such thing as eliminating your ego. Because that'd be eliminating your sense of self. There's things that influence the way we think and the way we feel and the decisions that we make. And sometimes those come from negative places. And so there's getting your ego in check or understanding your ego or coming to terms with your ego. Really meaning understanding, you know, why you're making the decisions you're making or why you're thinking the way you think, you know, those self-imposed limitations that you have. Why do you have those? And one of the most helpful things for me is when I think something, because when something rattles around in your brain, it seems believable, it seems logical, but sometimes when you take a pen and you write it on a piece of paper and you look at it, it looks totally different. You say, well, that's ridiculous. Like, why would I ever believe that in a million years? That, just, that doesn't even sound logical. So, you know, one thing is just analyzing when you think a certain way or you feel a certain way is going back and trying to look at that and understand why you feel that way because sometimes it's based on bullshit from your past from way back you know maybe it was something that your parents said to you when you're five years old or maybe it was something that happened to you when you were a kid all these things start to shape who we believe that we are i would just well first of all i would just separate it and, and say that you know having confidence yes that's that's part of your sense of self but true confidence, right? Not this overinflated sense of self, overinflated sense of self-importance, mm -hmm. more specifically, uh, or being better than other people or being smarter than other people. To me, being confident is believing in yourself, right? And it's being true to yourself. So it's really difficult to f ever feel truly confident when you're trying to project something to the outside world that isn't true, right? You're trying to project this persona that isn't really you. That's one of the things where I think ego really gets in the way is we want people to perceive us a certain way and it's not who we really are. And so that's one of the things is having to come to terms with who we really are and finding acceptance with who we really are. And that's when you can start really being happy because you hear all these stories about people who achieve all these things, right? So why do they pursue, you know, the physical things, the, you know, the cars and the watches and the clothes and the big house and all these things? It's for the self-image. They want to... It's a self-image for the way that people will, will perceive them. And they think that's going to make them feel a certain way. And the crazy thing, it doesn't. It's like a self-importance thing. And it, it doesn't to... make you feel that way. And I've watched it over and over. And that's one of the interesting things about being successful in business is you start you know, becoming friends with other people who are very successful. So you start to surround yourself with other successful people and you start to see it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And you realize that it's true what they say, that there's a lot of really successful people out there that aren't that happy. Right. So, you know, true happiness comes from knowing who you are 
and being true to yourself. And that's where you start to develop true confidence, being able to pursue the things that you really want to pursue. Why do people dress the same? Why do they start to like, you know, when it comes to fashion trends, you know, why is it that everyone starts to kind of dress the same and do things the same? Essentially, you're blending in. Mm -hmm. You're blending in with the masses, right? You want to fit in with a group. And maybe even if it's not the masses, maybe it's some sort of little click. You know, you got your hipsters and you got all these different, right, social clicks. And you want to fit in. Maybe you identify one of, with one of those. So you want to fit in with them. But I always really appreciate and respect when I meet someone who just does their own thing. But you got to be really confident in who you are to be able to pull that off. Otherwise, the first time someone looks at you funny or criticizes the way you dress, you're going to crumble and you're going to go back to blending in. Just be, I mean, look, that's a, you feel really, it, you almost feel like a prisoner when you feel like you have to act a certain way, be a certain way, think a certain way, just because that's what other people expect of you. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Yeah, for sure. That well, sucks. So, you know, just to truly figure out who you are and what you like and to be able to be that way, dress the way you want to dress, you know, be interested in things you want to be interested, you know, do it your way. That's cool. So number one, you find yourself defensive. Defensive. So I had a big ego when I was younger and I was super defensive. And the funny part about it, the things that I was defensive about, deep down I knew they were true, but I still felt defensive about them. So later on, when I finally got to a point in my life where I was not only accepting of these things, but I started to actually seek them out. You start to look for better quality people in your life that care about you enough to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the definition of a real friend. Right. Someone who tells you what you don't want to hear, mm -hmm. right? We talk about in the past, we've talked about integrity. That's what integrity means to me. You know, there's the people that'll tell you what you want to hear because it's easier for them. Like, oh man, I don't want to get into this conflict. I don't want to tell him something he doesn't want to hear. So they're going to do what's easy and they're just going to like appease your ego. Hmm. So for me, I'm at a point now where I want to improve. I want to get better. I want to call myself out on my own bullshit. And that's what I always ask myself all the time. Like, what are those things in life where I'm bullshitting myself? right? I'm telling myself this story that's not necessarily true. Right. You know, haven't, haven't you ever wanted to ask someone sometimes when you see them in a certain pattern, haven't oh. you ever just wanted to ask him like, do you actually see it? Always. Like, can you be honest with yourself? But the reality is most people either can't or don't want to see it. Let's get on to number two then. You compare yourself to others. That's what we're talking about now. I mean, each one of these things, I feel I have, a, I have an ego. Mm -hmm. It's not completely out of control yet, but it's not completely at check. So when I did read all this, it did kind of like, well, I do get a little defensive, you know, I, I yeah. do compare myself to others, not too much, but there's still like that, you know, you want to test yourself against the best. I never What's, compare myself to like somebody lower to me. It's always like, so, so let's talk about, you know, uh, status symbols, right? So let's talk about cars. Everyone, you know, usually likes cars. So you pull up to a stoplight. And you're driving a Honda and the guy next to you pulls up in a Ferrari. He looks over at you and you look at him. Now your average person looks at him and feels a little twinge of insecurity like somehow that this guy is better than me. Mm -hmm. And he's not better than you. Right. Whatever. He's maybe more successful or maybe for all you know he's got rich parents. You know, or maybe it's a loner. Maybe he rented it for the day. You never know, right? right? right. But at the end of the day, the guy's not better than you. And he can look over at you driving a Honda and say, I'm better than him. And I and that that bolsters his confidence. But that's not real confidence anyway, right? Comparing yourself to someone else and saying I'm better than him. No. You might be driving in a nicer car. And even in maybe in that guy's mind, that might not even be a nicer car. Because for all you know, that guy driving a Honda could be a billionaire. Because I've seen billionaires drive Hondas. Yeah. And he could just like the car because he likes the car and it's practical. <laughs> it's good gas. Whatever his reason Bill is. Bill Gates drives a Toyota Camry, by the way. You know, the, the, the last car I bought, I went out and I bought you know a GMC truck. Yeah, like, that's right. That's I'm right. just kind of over it. You know, I've gotten to that mm. point where I finally realized that they don't do much for me. I still appreciate nice cars and I still have my classic cars, but that's because they mean something to me personally. I don't drive those cars for anybody else. Right, right. I'm not doing it to impress them. It's for myself because for me, it brings up, you know, memories of being a kid because I was always around, you know, old cars and working on cars. And that's what I love. So I do it for myself, but I don't do it for other people. So it comes down to your reason. And that's what I say about like Ferraris. There's nothing wrong with the Ferrari. Like, 
there's certain, you know, craftsmanship there. There's racing heritage, you know, associated with it. And if you really appreciate those things about that car and it means something to you personally, then cool. By all means, drive it all day long. If you want to drive it because it's fast, well, then you should. Go right. drive that thing. Right. But if you're driving it to impress other people and when you pull up to stoplights, you look around because you want to see who's looking, that's coming from insecurity. A lot of times, especially you see this in South Florida a lot, because when I first moved here, coming from California, I thought that, you know, people out there put on a show. Man, here in South Florida, it's a whole different level. I mean, people live in a cardboard box so they can drive a nice car. It's all, all it's all about the show. What would you rather? Would you rather have some nice things but not have your possessions own you and have feel like you have some freedom in your life? Or have a bunch of nice things for status, but feel like you're being choked that your possessions literally own you. You know, your payments on your car and your payments on this house that you can't afford. That's not happiness. No. I I promise you, that's not happiness. You seek acceptance. Mm -hmm. Just to justify your own ego. I think I might be guilty of this. I always come up with, hey, I came up with this great idea or, you know, hey, check this out, you know, whatever. Because I do, to to someone like you that is, you know, a a boss, a mentor to me, I do seek your acceptance in a lot of things. Sometimes I probably don't need to go, you know, that far into it. But, you know, sometimes it's there. I, I I would say that you coming to me, not for acceptance, but coming to maybe spitball ideas and try to, you know, brainstorm and come up with cool different ideas or even to maybe try to figure out how to take your idea and maybe make little tweaks to make it better. I would say that that would be a better approach because going back to the confidence thing, it's not that I don't care what other people think. It's not like I'm walking around with this attitude like, oh, I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. But I kind of don't. I don't really care because, first of all, there's billions of people in the world. And why should I care what all of them think, right? What am I going to try to appease all people in the world? No. I care about what a few select people think, people that I respect, people that I love. And that's what I focus on. But even with the people that I love, when it comes to maybe a business decision, I'm not going to look for their acceptance or for them to say, hey, I think that's a good idea or a bad idea. That has to start within yourself and you have to feel like it's something that you want to pursue, that it's meaningful to you. You know, it's it's a dream, it's a goal, whatever it is, but it's too easy for people to inadvertently shit on your goals and your dreams and tell you, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Sometimes we talked about it before, sometimes they think they're trying to protect you. They don't want you to see you fail or get hurt. So I never, ever look for people's acceptance. I, I, I look for that within myself. Right. And number four, you make it a point to showcase your brilliance. I think that's an ego thing too, and that's something I'm probably guilty of too. Um, I kind of know I'm a smart guy, but I always have to kind of outwardly like, hey, look at this fucking crazy idea I came up with or something like that, you know? So yeah. people people with the big egos, they just make it a point to, well, I notice it. Well, I it's because, you know, and you have an idea in your head of, of who you are, but you are a smart guy, and you don't have to, to get people to try to take notice. Uh, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, the people that you care about and the people that care about you, they know that about you. Uh, so I would say that one, you have to be selective, like I said, who you're looking for approval from and, and not even approval, but the people that you surround yourself with. Because if I'm out there, like I said, driving my car and I'm worried about what someone thinks that pulls up next to me, someone that I don't know, hmm. I'm never going to know them. They don't know anything about why should I care what they think? And it's the same thing with social media. Why do people put so much importance on what other people think that they'll never, ever know, probably never, ever meet? You know, and that's that's people. It's really affecting them, whether they feel you know happy, whether they feel accepted. I'm like, you don't know these people. Hmm. You're 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 putting yourself out there to the whole world, to the whole world. So, will I post stuff on social media? Yeah, but I'm not looking for my sense of self in it. What's interesting about social media? So, let's talk about Instagram specifically. You're trying to project something, right? You're trying to project. This is who I am. This is the life I live. This is the way I think. These are the things that I do. You see it specifically in the fitness industry, right? Hey, I'm living the lifestyle. And again, you're putting that out there. That is your ego, right? You have this construct of who you think you are and you want other people to see it. You want other people to recognize it and you want them to like it. You want them to say, hey, I like who you are and I like what you do and I like what you think. So... You know, that's the danger of it right there is what you're putting out there already 
is that ego. But you know what's for me? It's funny because like I use Instagram as a creative director. I try to be funny and different, different certain things. But I use Instagram as an alter ego, almost. You know, and and that term is a popular term. But it's my more creative, artistic side. In my in my real life, I might not be as you know this fucking guy. That well, but you know, but you're also you're also semi anonymous on on social media, and so I think that is gives you a little bit of freedom. Where now you're not worried about people judging you personally. Right now, you feel more free to express yourself and to be yourself, and that's my point. Is when you can reach that point where you can be yourself, but now do it publicly right. and just say, "Hey, this is who I am, and this is what makes me unique." Like out of every everything that you've ever done, the things that I like are the things that I think are representative of who you really are, and those are the things that I think are cool. So, anytime you see that in somebody's work, and you see like their signature on it, they're stamped it. You know that it came from them. It's a piece of them. That's magic. And I think that should be the pursuit for everybody. As, as saying alter ego, that's probably my real ego. You know, that's, that's probably your real ego that you're afraid to showcase to the world. Right, right. And so let's go back to ego. Ego is your sense of self. So we talk about confidence and people, people have asked me where, like, how do you build confidence? And to me, confidence comes from wins, right? Not beating somebody else, but having some successes. And sometimes it has to start with little successes. So we've talked about the gym, right? It's hard to find sometimes that initial success, meaning reaching your goal. So now you break it down into smaller successes, like just making it into the gym is a success, right? Mm -hmm. So all those little wins, those add up. And over time, you start to feel like you have some control over yourself right right because it's this battle of you versus you so now you feel like hey i'm winning the battle starts to build your confidence i feel like you know yeah your ego your sense of self i feel like you have to have some wins in order to start feeling confident and you know of course over time people start to recognize that they start to see hey this guy's he's starting to get somewhere with this and they start to acknowledge that and then when people start to acknowledge it you can't go seek it but when you do it, people will acknowledge it. Right. But when you seek it out without doing the work for it, you're trying to take the shortcut there and it's not going to work. Right. So instead, just focus on doing you, mm -hmm. digging into it, being consistent with it, you know, pursuing the things that you want to pursue. And people, will, they, they will recognize that. So leadership to me, so whether it's in business or anywhere else, you've heard me say before, I always use the example of a group lost in the forest. So you've got 10 people that are in the forest. They don't know which way to go. They don't know how to get out of there. So who are you going to follow? Are you going to be diplomatic about it and take a vote on who to follow? No, you're going to follow the guy who says, hey, I know where to go. Arnold and, and Predator, this way. <laughs> if you sense that confidence in him that he knows the right way to go or she you're going to follow that person because you're not feeling confident in which way to go. So you're going to follow the person with confidence. So confidence to me is what makes the world go round. It's what makes the financial world go round. What makes the value of a stock go up and up and down? If it was just based on certain events, predictors, well, then everybody would be able to predict the stock market. It's very unpredictable, right? Well, it's because it's based on people's confidence in something. Maybe something happens and that affects you know, people's confidence either positively or negatively. Right. It affects the real estate market. You know, when do people start buying houses again? When does it, you start to get that boom again, that craze when everyone all of a sudden says, hey, I want to start buying now. It's not just about interest rates. It's not just about prices. It's about confidence. People feeling like, hey, I'm feeling secure again. I'm feeling secure in our economy. Right. And they don't think about it that way, but all of a sudden they just feel it. So confidence makes the world go round. And so that would be, you know, like if I were to try to teach one thing to my kids, it would be to believe in yourself. 